The average person is said to spend 15 minutes in the bathroom. Why not take advantage of that time and learn something new? Presenting the 15-minute podcast on weird facts, crazy details, and funny particulars that you'll be able to enjoy while you're taking a sh- Well, on your free time. Welcome to this shit with Sam Butler. Welcome to another episode of the Shit Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Butler. I have a very special guest. You guys uh, could see him if you're watching the YouTube channel. He's with me here. At, we're not even at the studio. We're actually in a hotel in Seattle um, with me, Adrian Monroy. Adrian, Hello. welcome, buddy. Thanks, man. Um, I want to thank you for being here. Uh, we talked about it in the Spanish episode, which already was released. Uh, remember, if you want to uh, watch the Spanish episode and then watch the English episode and compare... Um, we're not doing the exact same thing because we we are kind of freestyling. No, I don't know. I don't know that we're freestyling, but we are trying. We are kind of going over the talking points. Um, it'll be very similar, but you can compare both languages, and that's a good. Uh, I want to thank all the people that uh, use this podcast as a teaching tool for your schools. Um, uh, English is a second language, so on. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. And that's why we do the episode in Spanish and now in English. And uh, so you guys can use it more as a tool. Uh, we do have a lot of schools out there. Shout out to you guys that have uh, commented and thanked me for our doing it in both languages. That being said, dude, we have so much to talk about. <laughs> uh, we have very little time. Yeah, unfortunately. But, but uh, we're, we're actually, we decided we're going to do a part two of this episode. Uh, this was part one of uh, Welcome to Seattle. Now... Uh, before we, we get into the gist of it, the, the mix, okay. first of all, please like, subscribe, hit the notifications button on, uh, on the YouTube channel. We get monetized that way, and I'm able to pay for the production of the show through the monetization. It's not a lot that we make. We don't know if you can see, we don't have that many views, but you can help me with that by liking, subscribing, and hitting the notifications <laughs> bell. Uh, so thank you, uh, and if you haven't found the channel, if you're listening to me on uh, podcast platforms like Spotify or uh, iTunes or whatever, uh, you can find us at YouTube as Two Amigo Sam. That's T U Amigo Sam on my YouTube channel. And one more thing, dude, we're going to Mexico City. Yeah, I'm super excited about. I that. mean, you're here in Seattle with me. Yeah. We came down here. My daughter moved to Seattle. That's why we're here. This is not a comedy trip. We usually go on the road a lot doing comedy. But this time around, we're here because my daughter wanted to move here. You've never been to Seattle before? No, it was on my bucket list. I'm finally here. Yeah. I'm finally here. So I really wanted to do something. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I did an episode about Lake Placid because I was doing some work up in Lake Placid, New yeah. York, which is all the way across the country. Uh, a lot of you guys um, that listen to the Spanish episode know this. But if you don't, I mean, Lake Placid is uh, south of Montreal. Right now, I think we're south of Vancouver. No relation to the movie, right? That's a different. No, and I talked about it. I talked about it in the episode. There is a relation, but it's not direct. Yeah. Uh, the Lake Placid movie was actually shot in uh, Maine. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And there's one reference to Lake Placid, New York, in that movie, and it's when Bill Pullman, I guess he was in the movie. Yeah, he was. A he sheriff. says he was a sheriff or something. He says. We were going to call, it was Black Lake, and he goes, we were going to call this Lake Placid, but Lake Placid was taken. <laughs> he was oh, talking about, he New makes, a, he makes oh, a reference to the one in New York. Okay. okay. So uh, I'm like, they named the whole movie Lake Placid, but based off, off of that one line, which I don't think that movie did so great. I never watched it. Uh, I just researched some weird facts about <laughs> Lake Placid, and some of the weird facts about the movie uh. came up. And so anyways, that was Lake Placid. And after I did that episode, I got a lot of comments in my social media, in my YouTube channel. Hey, every city you visit, you should do a Weird Facts episode. You should do... Yeah. Uh, and so, hey, welcome to Seattle. I yeah. think this is something that that uh, might be good. Hopefully you enjoy it. Um, dude, we're really running out of time. With that being said, <laughs> uh, we're in Mexico City, uh, Friday, August 26th. Uh, we're doing a show at, uh, at uh, Club 139. Uh, if you look up circulocomedy.com uh, forward slash Sam Butler, you can find the tickets there. Adrian's going with me. He's doing a, a spot in Spanish yeah. in Mexico City. Uh, please tell your friends. Come out, support. Uh, hang out with us. We'll have some beers. It'll be awesome. 
And also, uh, we have other comedians like Freddy Correa out of uh, uh, Las Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. We'll be doing a guest spot. We have uh, uh, Brian Vila, Johnny Mejia, Felicia, uh, 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 Vicente. Uh, great lineup, uh, mix of Mexican uh, uh, comedians with Mexican American comedians. <laughs> and so it's going to be an international show. Yeah. Come check it out. And I get to do my headlining set. All right. Let's get started, dude. We're in Seattle. What do you think of Seattle so far? I love it immensely. It's it's a beautiful city. I'm 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 big into like hiking and outdoorsy stuff. But the traffic. Oh, and this is from guys that like frequent Los Angeles for like decades now. Yeah, we've been we've been traveling to LA. I mean, we've been traveling uh, to LA together for over ten years now. That's true. Yeah. And um, the traffic dude. is. Horrendous. And you know what? The the highway wasn't so bad. No, it's not. It's no, not. it was all the traffic in the city. Uh, Seattle, uh, if you're listening to this, uh, traffic engineers, get your shit together. Oh, my God. Because all of your lights are out, out of sync. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about, but when the light in front of me is green, and the one in front of that one is red, and the one in front of that one is green, and the traffic's backed up to my light, and the guys in front of me can't move, it makes it tough to move in traffic. We spent an hour and a half, like in a five, going like five miles. Through Seattle, and I was like, "Are you f- kidding me? It's like I want to cuss right now, but are you like kidding me? Can you time these damn lights so that the one in the very front is green, and then the one behind it is green, and then the one behind that one is green, and then we can all move at the same time? Yeah. You know, it's called timing. It's been around since the '60s. Come on, guys. So the glacier that made the city dude, is probably dude, faster than traffic. Dude, I'm telling you, like, and, and and you know, we've been we've I've, I've been to D.C. which is horrible in traffic. I've been to New York, horrible traffic. I've been to L.A. and you guys are just like doing it out of spite <laughs> because it's not even that bad. You guys are just being assholes. That's all I'm saying. Like, oh, you man. can you can fix this shit. Like, you really can. It's called timing the lights. Oh, anyways, that's enough of that. Yeah. <laughs> Seattle's a great city, though. Um, walk. I, I think they want you to walk. I, I really. Yeah, I, I think it. they're like, you got to be green. Ride a bike. Ride a scooter. Walk. I, fat ass. It's methodical. Why do you want to drive? <laughs> the traffic. And I, and I would if I could pull a trailer with a scooter, I'd be down. Oh God, yeah. Right? <laughs> <The> scooter. <laughs> but anyways, uh, wonderful city. As you can see, yeah. you guys listening to us on the podcast uh, on. Uh, different platforms that are not YouTube. You can see, uh, if, if you want to watch uh, the YouTube video uh, behind us, you can see the Space Needle. Mm-hmm. The Space Needle is iconic for Seattle. I think everybody identifies Seattle by the Space Needle. What's What what got me, what kind of shook me, I, and I sound like my kids, I'm shook. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but what, what, kind of, what, what kind of surprised me is that they have these uh, monuments everywhere there's a World's Fair. Oh, that's right. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's one in Toronto. Uh-huh. I think it's here. Uh, I know that in San Antonio they have one. It's called the Hemisphere. I don't know what other countries. I didn't really research the World's Fair. But I know that that was from the 1962 World's Fair. Oh, okay. Now, the gentleman that designed it, um, I actually went to Germany, to Stuttgart, Germany. And he saw a radio antenna that kind of looked like that on top of a building. And inspired him to design it, and he designed it on a napkin. Oh wow! And then, boom, it was the space needle. The space needle. Das. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, it looks the way it does. Uh, I think what's 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 iconic about it is that it actually looks like a flying saucer if you look at it. Yeah. You know, it does have that flying saucer shape. I think they all kind of look like that, but like at the hemisphere, it's kind of it's kind of different. This one actually looks like a flying saucer stuck up on a. Yeah, on a pedestal, and um, which is which is uh, perfect. I, I don't know if if this was on purpose or not. I guess I would have to go research the the Space Needle to find out if this was done purposefully. But it just so happens that Seattle has the highest ratio of uh, UFO sightings. That's nuts, man. I, I, in the in the United States, and I don't know, maybe in the world. But it has the highest ratio per capita. It's like they said that there's like 78.3 uh, sightings for every 100,000 people. I don't know how that number, compi- how they compiled that number. 
It sounds like a lot of sightings. And in, in, in some of the research that I found, it said there was more sightings in Seattle of UFOs than even in Roswell, New Mexico, which we live close to Roswell and uh, Roswell's 100% Area 51 yeah. themed. Everything uh, you see in the movies. Everything, everything yeah. is uh, Roswell. And Seattle beats them? That's weird. I think people do a lot more mushrooms out here. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a, that's a possibility. I didn't even think about that. That's a possibility. Yeah, man. Are you guys uh, really seeing them? Or? <laughs> yeah. Now, um, this, I guess, but, you know, I do think that, that um, I don't know, I, I think I think it, it lends itself. I mean, the other night we were driving up. Oh, yeah. Right? Jesus. We were driving up and we were, we were, we were switching drivers. And we were both like glancing up at the sky, and we see this beautiful. It almost like you mentioned it looked like a spider web of of, of stars. I've, right? I've traveled a lot, and I've never seen the skylight like it like it looks out here in Washington. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it just looked like it just looked like there's so many stars, and it looked like a web almost. It, right? it did, right? It, yeah. And then I'm like, all right, bro, let's go. And I go and get in the truck, and you're gonna because you drove my daughter's car up here for yeah. me, and you're like. <laughs> and then you saw so I'm up there looking like at the stars like an idiot, knowing like just distracted. And Sam pulls away in the truck and the trailer, and all of a sudden, man, I just get like this vibe. weird vibe. And I'm not very much into the supernatural and stuff, but that it was really was it Bigfoot? Was he watching dude, you? Dude, my butthole shrank like that. <laughs> it's I, all right. I, I gotta I get in the car, uh, dude. I don't know. What, but it was probably like I what? didn't hear it was anything. Like, it, was it was like, like it was a feeling. It was like yeah, it was like. Like midnight, one midnight, in the morning. Yeah, one in the morning, right? Pitch black. Creepy. Yeah. Creepy. Anyway. Uh, the woods can be scary. <laughs> but, we'll hear but, that some yeah, other time. But I could see how that would be a thing here. Yeah, you know? dude. Yeah. Um, do you have an idea of what yeah. they should do for the uh, stop for the walk and go? Oh, yeah. yeah that, was, that was awesome. Brilliant. Like, they have the little, the little guy that glows. And then we're getting back to the traffic. But the little guy that glows that says, walk. Yeah. Seattle, you're missing it, bro. <laughs> you're missing it. You should do a silhouette of Bigfoot. Like, that's what you should do. Like, it should be a Bigfoot walking across the street. You guys are missing an opportunity, a huge marketing. Because there's a lot of Bigfoot stuff out here. You know, Lake Placid had a lot of Bigfoot stuff. Yeah, like, like, none, like, none of that over here, dude. Yeah, like, the, no, you'll see some when we go to the souvenir shops later. Uh, they got face, uh, uh, okay. Bigfoot sighting things. But, I mean, this is the place where he'd live, right, I guess? Mm -hmm. Anywhere with woods. Oh, man, we got so much. Seattle was, was founded in 1851 by the Denny Party. They came here. Seattle became a hub during the Klondike Gold Rush in Alaska. This became the staging area for the for the Klondike. Oh. Um, the people would come, pack up their stuff. So this became a very important thing. We have the Puget Sound, which the Puget Sound is uh, a lake here, kind of a bay that has access to the ocean. But we're like 90 miles from the ocean. You got huge shipping. You have you have boats you, you you see them offloading containers so this feels like a port even though it's not necessarily a port but it is mm -hmm. you know it's kind of like the mississippi where they come in through you know uh new orleans and they go all the way up to chicago and the great lakes so it's kind of like that um that's awesome there's a lot of uh boating so on and so forth seattle was created by a glacier <laughs> yeah. yeah the glacier melted and as it slid it created some grooves and it deposited some soil some rocks and that's why seattle has a lot of hilly areas like where my daughter's living now on capitol hill you have queen anne you have all these neighborhoods that are just piles of rocks yeah. that were created um we're going to talk a lot more about the city of seattle on the next episode but that's how the city was founded um that's that's some of the things some of the things that uh, started here Amazon. I mean, I'm rushing through it now because we're at almost 14 minutes, bro. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Amazon was founded here. Microsoft was founded here. Uh, they Starbucks. Uh, Starbucks. Uh, the original Starbucks. Uh, we're gonna go check that out. But it's not. It's not the original Starbucks. Uh, but nice. but it's the one they're claiming is the original Starbucks. Um, but we're gonna go to that one. It's the most original one they've got. Uh, they should put like a statue of like. Starbucks is Selena, like the original Whataburger. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they should have a... a I don't know no, what they're... No, but they, the, the original one no longer exists. Oh, okay. But this is the most original one they got. It's like the second original That's one. That's what they're claiming. Yeah, it, it's Pike, Pike's Place, you know, whatever. But we're going to go there. We're going to check all that stuff out. 
This is uh, where coffee, the, the whole idea of selling coffee um, like they do today for four or five bucks. This is where it started because it's rainy here. Yeah. And people say this is like where it rains the most. It'd be surprising to find out that they actually have less rain than even Houston, Texas. Yeah, there's a lot of facts um, yeah. about Seattle that are contradictory. Yeah, to they yeah you, there. yeah the stereotype is that it rains so much here they have more cloudy days and they have drizzle. But when it comes to actual rain, uh, I said Houston, other cities like Houston, Texas get more rain than they do, okay. right? But I've heard it's very depressing because the skies have been gray. I'm gonna tell you, it's been sunny. Right? Yeah, yeah, we're in the middle yeah. of. Uh, but we're in the middle of the summer. I, yeah. I see how in the winter that could be a case. Now the winter, Seattle, super cold. The lowest temperature recorded, 2009. No, 1950 oh. was the lowest one, and it was uh, zero degrees Fahrenheit. Now that's cold. That's 32 degrees below freezing. Freezing is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's not that cold. You go to Minnesota, you go to New York, you go to, and they get to be like. 10 11 degrees below you know and so zero as the coldest temperature here doesn't seem so uh mount rainier is here they it's it's the highest temperature like right now i think yesterday we were like at 88 or 90 mm -hmm. degrees right In the summertime uh mount rainier still has snow yeah that's amazing it's beautiful to, to watch uh over a thousand people have died trying to climb that thing Jesus. right which we should do an episode just on mount rainier uh it's an active volcano mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how active it is, but it probably wiped the city out. But we live amongst them anyways, yeah. right? So it's one of those things that everybody lives amongst volcanoes. I mean, even El Paso is a fault line, mm -hmm. you know, and we never get earthquakes except that one time, you know, but All um, right. yeah, we rebuilt, no problem. <laughs> yeah, I think it was like a point one, you know, it's like, but anyways, um, shoot, uh, the volcano, uh, Mount Rainier is a volcano. Uh, they call this the Emerald City. Oh, Did that's we talk true. about that? Yeah, no, we haven't talked um, about it now. The bay um, um, here, that's crazy the lake. Fact. That's a weird. Yeah, thing. it's weird, right? Um, all of the all of the buildings along the skyline here have green tinted glass. I never, it's the first time I ever seen. Yeah, it. and and when the sun sets, the the sunlight hits those buildings and everything turns green, and that's where it got the nickname, the Emerald City. The rain. We're getting back to the rain. Uh, and, uh, and the heat, uh, 109 degrees is the hottest it's gotten here, and that was in 2009. Yeah. Now, 109 degrees is a lot, but not compared to like Yuma. We had 106 degrees in El Paso last week, yeah. right? So that's as hot as it, So the temperatures, even though you have some extremes, those are the records. With that being said, that tells you that everything's pretty much above zero and below 109. It's not bad. I can handle that. Yeah. But... I know people here take vitamin D tablets because there's very little sunlight, and I guess that's in the winter time. It's all, <laughs> yeah. all the depression. That's why. You, the that's depression. why the coffee is so popular to yeah. fight your hey, depression. Hey, coffee started. <laughs> the sale of coffee started here. A gentleman bought a cart, kind of like the Paleta Man, and he bought a cappuccino machine and he converted it to an espresso machine. I don't know how you do that, but he started selling espresso out of a cart, and boom, the coffee industry was born. I bet you he was Latino with our Latino into it, uh, you know, drive. I hope he was. I really hope he was. That's it for this episode of the Ship Podcast. Thank you, Adrian, for joining me. Thank you for having me. Guys, we're going to have a part two on Seattle. Uh, thank you guys for watching the Spanish episode and commenting and telling us that you want a second part. And thank you for the suggestion of doing it wherever we visit. We have, uh, we have a secret trip coming up. Well, it's not a secret. <laughs> um, but uh, we're, we're actually going to Italy. Mm -hmm. We're going to visit our friend uh, Kitty Commando, you know, uh, Nick Farrell. Fellow uh, comic. Uh, fellow comedian. Um, we're going to be out there. We actually have a show in Rome, uh, September 30th. And we're doing, yeah, yeah it's Rome in English, Rome. though. Non parlo molto bene, italiano. Yeah. Um, but we're doing an English show in Rome, mm -hmm. September 30th. Uh, looking forward to it. Uh, uh, if you're an Italian immigration officer, we're not. We're just going to go visit. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, um, thank you guys for joining us on this episode of the Shit Podcast. Where can people find you? Uh, not Adrian Monroy uh, on all social media. On all social media. Yeah. And you can find me as Tu Amigo Sam. That's T U Amigo Sam. And uh, if you can't find Adrian, you can find him on my social media. With that, 
Thank you, guys. That's the end of this episode of The Shit Podcast. We'll catch you on the next one.